Welcome back to The Breakfast Show. Despite that uh, very sad music, these days, being diagnosed with cancer is not necessarily a death sentence. In fact, if detected early, much can be done to prevent the cancer from spreading. One of such treatments is called cryosurgery, which has changed the way doctors treat prostate and kidney cancer. Now, we did a little research, and here's what we found. Cryosurgery is a US FDA-approved treatment against prostate cancer. Cryosurgery is guided by ultrasound imaging, thus allowing precise treatment of cancerous yeah. tissue. It typically takes only one or two hours, the procedure that is. And it has shown that immense success rates from 92 to 98 percent in treating kidney and prostate tumors. Mm -hmm. And cryosurgery patients typically spend only one night in the hospital or may even go home on the same day after their procedure. Yep, so cryosurgery is fast becoming an increasingly popular way to remove a variety of tumors around the world. In fact, the first ever procedure of its kind conducted in Glen Eagles, Kuala Lumpur, was performed by our guest this morning, consultant, urological surgeon, Dr. Lo Chit Sin, along with jo Dr. John Watt from the Department of Urology in MD Anderson Cancer Center in the U.S. Welcome to the show, yes. uh, Dr. Lo. Now, Thank for those of us who are not familiar with the method, what exactly is cryosurgery? Okay. Well, cryosurgery involved the uh, using extreme cold to kill off tissues. Mm. Now we all know that um, when normal tissue, whether it is malignant or normal tissues, when it is subjected to extreme of temperature, you will cause cell death. A good example is uh, frostbites, mm -hmm. which you see in mountaineers. Yeah. Right. You can see the whole, <coughs> you know, fingertips turning black. Now. What we uh, have discovered over the years is that uh, tumor cells are, in fact, even more susceptible to this type of damage. Right. And if you can introduce this very extreme temperature in a controlled way and localize to where you want it to be, you can get a very selective effect. Mm. And the beauty of this is you can do that with the minimum amount of invasion to the body. And mm. by that, I mean inflicting scars. Right. right. So cryosurgery, uh, for many years, for example, has been used by dermatologists, mm -hmm. skin specialists, yep. to treat uh, skin conditions, mm -hmm. uh, skin warts, skin tumour. And in those days, it is a very crude way of using liquid nitrogen, nitrogen. Yeah. cotton wool bud. Yeah. Right. Okay, and that, that works. Mm. But of course, with, uh, with advent of technology, you know, we have now come up with uh, cryoprobes. These are needles through which you can pass certain gas and the needle tip will become extremely cold. Right. Uh, so it's almost like, if you think about it, keyhole surgery. It is. It is a form of keyhole surgery, that's right. And so initially we were using our, um, nitrogen, liquid mm -hmm. nitrogen, mm -hmm. and later argon. So right. we're, these days we are more using argon and uh, helium. And so with, with the use of these two gas, uh, gases, then what you do is the, the tip of the needle becomes so cold mm -hmm. that you actually literally get a, an ice ball forming on the needle. So it's right. almost like that needle becomes an ice, ice cream stick and the tissue around it becomes you know, an ice cream. Right. right, so you basically freeze it. Freeze it, basically. And then how is the tissue then okay. removed? So, so basically, after, after <coughs> you've done that, you have to thaw it Mm. And usually we would put through the uh, tumour through two cycles of freezing because it's, it has been shown that it is more effective that way. And then after that, when you remove it, the tissues will stay in, in there, but it will be dead tissue. Right. Right. And then the body would deal with these dead cancer tissues gradually over a period of a few months. Okay, so explain yeah. to us what we're seeing here on the okay. screen right now. So here you see the, uh, this is the prostate. The, the red area is the bladder and this pink structure is the prostate gland. And you can see these needles being introduced from the, uh, the perineum, that's the part of the lower uh, body in front of the anus. Now these are cryoprobes, these are the needles being introduced in an orderly fashion and these are all uh, controlled by ultrasound imaging. And now the gas is being passed, you will slowly see white balls forming there. These are the ice, ice balls and these will join up together to form one big lump of ice. So you can see now the prostate is just one big lump of ice. Right. And then following thawing, the, uh, you know, the, the ice will melt. And then of course, 
you do that again, a second cycle, and then later you just pull out the needles. And so essentially the patients just have a few holes in his, uh, in his perineums rather than a big cut on his tummy. Right. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. And this has, how often has this been performed in KL now? Well, this just is, once this, or? Well, for the prostate, just, just once because yeah. this is so new. Mm. But cryosurgery is not new. Cryosurgery yeah. has been around as, certainly in America mm. for at least uh, 10, 15 years. 10, 15 years. Mm. As far as the uh, prostate, the kidneys, right. the livers are concerned. And how early at the stage of cancer does someone have, uh, you know, to be de detected before they can actually uh, go through this surgery? Well, it, it depends on what type of cancers and of which organ. Mm. But as far as the prostate is concerned, there are many other treatment modalities which are very effective. Right. Albeit more invasive. Mm. Right. Because cryosurgery is very safe. You know, but it does also have some drawbacks. Mm. For example, if I had prostate cancer, I would not choose cryosurgery simply because I'm still sexually active. Right. And while cryosurgery is very effective on the cancer, it's not very good on your erection. Mm. Right. So you have to pick and choose. But right. if you have a patient who is not so suitable for surgery, maybe other general medical conditions, anesthetic risk and all that, mm -hmm. then this would quite clearly be a very good uh, substitute. Now, how is this procedure used for kidney uh, as well? Because mm -hmm. it's been said that it it's is, quite yes. widely used for, for kidney yeah. cancer. Yeah. Well, the thing about kidneys is that, you see, with increasing uh, access to ultrasound scans, we are now diagnosing kidney cancers. Uh, at an earlier and earlier stage. Right. So you, you can pick up kidney cancers as small as one to two centimeter. And the traditional way of treating kidney cancers is to take the whole kidney out. Mm -hmm. And it will be such a waste of uh, normal kidney tissue when you have one tiny portion of the kidney affected right. and you have to yeah. take out the whole kidney. Now with cryosurgery, you can preserve the kidney and you can do so without inflicting big, big scar. Mm. Basically, just a few puncture holes in the skin. You direct the needle exactly into where the tumor is, just freeze it up, and the rest of the kidney is left totally intact. And so the person continue to have two kidneys instead of just one, one kidney. Just one. Yeah. Now, is uh, research being done to uh, conduct cryosurgery on other types of cancers? Yes, very, very much so. And uh, the FDA has certainly approved cryosurgery uh, for the use uh, for the following cancers. Lung cancers, mm -hmm. uh, liver cancers, um, and um, breast cancers. There's a lot of work being done at the moment, mm. and uh, you know certainly breast cancers. It, it, it would be very yeah. attractive for some women because of the cosmetic, uh, mm -hmm. for you know, uh, cosmetic reasons. Right, yeah. and, and, and of course bone cancers <coughs> as well. And how far do you see that this, this uh, popularity of this method will be used here in Malaysia? As far as, as far as we know, it is already very popular but only with a certain sector of our society because mm. what we know is uh, one of the largest cryosurgery centers is the Fudan uh, Medical Center in Guangzhou. Okay. Okay. And with the Chinese community, many, many Chinese uh, patients had actually privately gone to Guangzhou to have it treated. Oh, okay. And I have myself had a couple of patients who has had it treated in Guangzhou and mm. back. And I understand there are even agents in town who will oh. sign you up and take you there for treatment. The demand is quite clearly there. Mm -hmm. It is just that, you know, until now, we have not been able to offer this. Right. And for the first time now, we are able to offer this right. in, in our country. <laughs> Okay. Right. Mm. Well, that's good but, news. you know, what is you think is the determining uh, or the underlying factors when it comes to deciding to have cryosurgery or go the traditional route? You have to be guided by your doctor mm. because, you know, each organ, the, the cancer of, of each organ's treatment choices are very, very complex. The decisions involved in whether to choose this treatment against that treatment, you have to properly go through it with your doctors because, you know, sometimes success and cure is more important than scar. Sometimes yeah. anesthetic risk is worth taking because of clear difference in outcome. Sometimes, you know, it is too dangerous to do this and that. Right. And so you cannot generalize. You have to individualize right. and you mm -hmm. have to discuss it quite carefully with your doctor. So quite a lot of factors actually are involved exactly. in deciding. Exactly. But what is important is you know, you must also realize that there is this option. Because sometimes patients do not know it, and this option is not brought up 
as a consideration. Right. And right. So right. it's it's his past, you know. It's mm. people just end up having surgery right. simply because nobody knows that this is there's an option, mm. and and so you don't go and explore it. Okay. Now, last question. Uh, I think it'll come down to cost. Yes. <laughs> That's always on cost top of Cost and success rate yeah. as well. Yeah. Cost and success yeah. rate. I mean, is it more costly than the traditional other in forms inevitably, of oil business? Inevitably, because what you have to understand is this. This, this is a, a US technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, the technology is denominated in the US. Our basic health cost is very, very cheap mm -hmm. because, you know, our, our hospitals are uh, construction is cheap, our nurses pay and all that compared to international standard, of course. Yeah. Right. So when you, when you look at it like that, it is actually very expensive in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it in the US, in, in Europe, which is actually very competitive, it compares well with conventional surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're talking about treating kidney cancers, depending on the size, because you know how many probes, how many of those needles you use right. very much uh, affect the cost. But a ballpark figure may be somewhere in the region of 50,000 ringgit. 50,000 ringgit, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, success rate, we were talking about success, success rate. Um, if, you, if you apply it in the correct uh, se uh, setting uh, as recommended, mm -hmm. then the results is the same as conventional treatment. Right. That means surgery. Right, right. right. Yeah. Thank you very much yes. for that, uh, Dr. My Lowe. My pleasure. And if you'd like more information on uh, these cryo surgery, you can actually visit the Glen Eagles KL or log on to their website and that would be www.gleneaglesklkl.com.my. On that note, we're going to take a quick break, <laughs> but...